Hello. Hello. This is my testing. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Frank or Beth. Um, yeah. Um, that, that's what happens when you get parents that are from two different sides of the world. Uh, anyway, does anybody here read? And I mean like novels and stories. I, I don't necessarily mean like studies or documentaries or anything like that. Well, I don't. Uh, not as much as I'd like to, at least. Um, and I'm not completely sure why either. I think it's because uh, I'm just never really interested enough to continue on reading most of the time. Um, like, I'll be reading with my eyes, but then my brain's just completely somewhere else. Like, it doesn't, it goes right through my skull. Like, I'll, I'll be reading something, and, the fr and then the author at one as a background detail. I was just like, oh, hey, a frog on a rock. That reminds me, this one time when I was like three, I saw a frog on a rock, and I decided to poke it with a stick. It died. I felt, I felt terrible, like, Jesus, why did I just do that? What did the poor frog do to me? You know, I just murdered it in cold blood for sport. What's wrong with me? I'm everything wrong with this world. But then I thought, what if the frog was evil? And somehow I just saved a puppy's life by killing it. I felt like a hero in my own mind. And then how, how would I like, live with killing a person if I'm being traumatized over a frog that I just met? And then at this point, I've already read three pages further in the book. I have no idea what any of it says. Um, it's kind of frustrating, actually, because I do wish I could say I'm more of a booky person, uh, you know, one of those people who reads all the time and stuff. But uh, I don't know, maybe due to my ADHD, I, I never just could get around to it, uh, which is going to bite me in later in college. Um, but... I'm not here to talk to you about reading. I know some of you who know me wide-eyed me, like, Frank's talking about books now, what? Um, yeah. um, let me ask you a question. If your life was a book, would you care to read it? Do you like what's going on in your book? What do you think of the characters? And most importantly, do you like the main character? That's you. Um, would you rather it be a story about, you know, a guy finding out what he loves to do, works his heart out for it, is, is persevering and committing to it, and so that he can achieve something beautiful, or to look more like the story of, you know, lazy, I felt like doing that, but like, nah, you know what I mean? I'm just going to sit here and blame people, be jealous all day, because like, why not? Screw it. That's nice. Um, how would you want your story to go? Uh, well, see, the great thing about all that is you get to be the author of that story. You get full control over what your character does. And now it's true that, and unfortunate that we can't always decide what happens in the story, um, where the setting is, or anything like that. Uh, but you do get to decide what your character does about it. Um, you get to decide how your character acts, how he thinks, what he does, what he practices, who he hangs out with, who he avoids, um, who he dances to. I don't care. You get so many things to decide. Um, and if I could write this, uh, the main character from my story to be anything I wanted him to be, I would make him the best person I could possibly be. Sorry if that was a little too Mr. Rogers for some of you. <laughs> um, I like to use this perspective of mine in everyday life. Um, so here's an example I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, especially us students. Um, say your alarm goes off in the morning, um, and then if you don't get out of bed and start moving right now, you're going to be late for school. Um, you're left with two options. Either A, get out of bed, you know, it hurts, whatever, we've all been there. Shower, get ready, get dressed, uh, but get to school on time, you know, productive first period, don't fall asleep, actually kind of enjoy it for some of us, I guess. Um, or option B, which is lie in the holy sanctum slash fountain of youth called your bed because the outside world's dark and scary and you don't want <laughs> to go out there. Uh, until your mom comes in screaming at you to get out of bed and then you have to waddle to school half asleep, hungry, and smelling bad. Um, which one would your character go with? My mom would definitely argue that I choose option B nine times out of ten, which is not true, by the way. It's more like, it's more like seven or eight, but... <laughs> um, but despite our everyday morning conflicts, this perspective of mine, it applies more to the greater aspects of life, which is, um, let me tell you a story. Uh, so a couple of years ago, uh, I think I was pretty depressed. Um, I was just bummed out all the time, felt like I sucked at everything, uh, and just totally unmotivated to do anything. I'd sit in my room all day doing nothing but, you know, watch TV, play video games, other guy stuff. Um, 
And I was always in trouble with my teachers because I'd never do work. Uh, I'd always get emails home. You know, mom would yell at me. Um, I wasn't the least bit athletic. Uh, and I said I played guitar, but the truth is I could hardly strum a chord. Um, I was just simply too lazy and unconfident to do anything, really. And it's, it's really hard to push yourself when you have such a negative perspective of yourself because like, you don't really want to make someone who you don't like do something. Um, so eventually it got to, you know, friends started hanging out with me less. Uh, girlfriend dumped me. Um, parents were pissed all the time. And I was just like, wait, stop. Is this, is this really who I am? Is this who I want to be? Is this what I want the story of my life to sound like? No, I sound like a freaking loser. Um, I mean, seriously, if I were to die tomorrow, I thought, you know what I mean, and then some late years later in the future, they were to tell the story of my life, would I be impressed with what I just heard? Absolutely not. I, that's, that's garbage, you know what I mean? Like, is, that, is that like my legacy? You know, I spent my life lying in bed complaining about stuff. It, ugh. Um, uh, and so one day I decided that, no, I, I don't want it to sound like that. Um, and I decided, you know, while I'm here, I want to make my story the most badass I can make it. I thought, I'm going to knock this story dead. I'm going to be like Edgar Allan Poe of cool stuff. But, um, <laughs> so I told myself, you know what, I'm not going to give up. I'm done quitting. I'm going to go do something right now. I almost slapped the thing, my mic. Sorry. Uh, so uh, that week... The following week, uh, rugby tryouts were starting. Um, and I never really liked rugby, uh, mostly because my brother would never shut up about it. Uh, and also, sports weren't really my thing. But um, you know what? I told myself I'd do it. So what I do, you know, I got, I was all geared up, showed up ready, you know, pumped up. It's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. It's going to work my heart out. It sucked. It was awful. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I cried. I, like, threw up twice the first day. Um, the next morning, I felt like I was made of wood because I was so... I was like, <laughs> Mom, you know, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I still kept showing up though. Um, e even after I sucked at all the drills and stuff, and a few certain members of the team would really specifically let me know that. Uh, I'm mentioning names, but um, yeah, and uh, I think I think it was the second week or so we had a tournament uh, played against some other schools, just some friendly games, so the coaches could see uh, who was good or not. You know what I mean? Just to see how we acted like under the pressure of a game situation, uh, they never put me on. Um, and I am one of two of, I think, 24 people who can say that. The other guy had a broken foot. <laughs> Legit. Um, so even though I technically wasn't allowed to, uh, I still, up, still showed up to every training that there was, um, from every practice to every like 5 a.m. morning training, oh god, uh, and the weights room sessions that the team had. Um, and it might sound like, you know, I'm doing this because, you know, rugby's my thing. I love it. Michael Jordan, passionate. Uh, but no, I hated every second of it. Like, my body hurt all the time. This isn't fun at all. Everyone call me stupid. Um, no, Jesus. Uh, but eventually, uh, I started earning the respect from my coaches and my team members. They gave me the nickname Frank the Tank, which is pretty cool. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't, but that's like, I don't care. Um, so um, they still didn't let me play in like the big tournaments and things like that, uh, which was okay though, because they all still considered me a part of the team, and I even got a uniform with my name on it. <laughs> wow. Um, so I, I was really proud of that, being, being a part of all that, because um, I made the goal to get on the team, whether it be, be like a bench warmer or a sub even, I don't care, just be on the team. I made the goal to do that, and I failed. But I was proud of it because I stuck with it till the end, and I tried my best at it. So I went home feeling pretty nice about it. The following year, however, um, I tried out again. Not only did I get on the team, I was one of the starting seven. Um, yeah. uh, the coaches told me things that things like I was a key player, and they'd even use me in examples of of like of of good commitment, um, good motivation, and, and they'd always put me in their speeches as, like, as a leading example, um, which was amazing, because that was me. That was that skinny little kid who would get on the field and then just get like, like pummeled, you know what I mean? <laughs> Every time. Uh, 
just every time I showed up. But I still kept showing up. Um, that kid. And then my coach just said, you've got the ticket, bro. You know, um, they're from New Zealand. <laughs> uh, sorry if the accent. Uh, but yeah, uh, they told me that, uh, you know, it's just like, Frank, you're, you're a living example of proof that it's not about the dog and the fight, but the fight and the dog, um, which, is, which is a great quote, I think. Um, I won my first sports award of my life that year, uh, the most improved player for the varsity boys. Um, and now I love rugby. Like, I'm passionate about it even. I, I play whenever I can. I play in a few clubs, and I even coach the U15 team here at NIST. Um, and, you know, looking back, I'm almost glad that I was that lazy kid because the story of me breaking out of that habit sounds pretty cool to me, I think. Um, and it's just like, it, with that, like the fact that, you know, Twiggy got out of that situation, it just makes me feel like if I really put myself to something, if I really, like, tell myself that I can and don't quit on it, I can do almost anything because I could not believe that I, I made the team. Um, it also makes a good story. You see what the connection I'm making here is. Um, uh, and it's not just rugby either. Uh, I also, at the, around the same time, uh, I started picking up my guitar. You know, and I play the thing every day till my fingers bled. Summer of 69. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you get the song. Uh, but uh, I played at a concert we have here at NIST called Mixed Up um, with a couple of bands, and both of them ended up being some of the best performances that were there. I started studying harder than I'd ever done before. All my teachers were super impressed. Um, and the report card I got was like at least twice as good as anything I've ever done in the past. Um, and hell, now I'm, I'm the happiest I've ever been. And why is, because I wanted my story to sound cooler. You know what I mean? And you all seem relatively content, so it couldn't be that bad, right? <laughs> uh, Uh, but yeah, um, so this has always been a great motivator for me. Uh, it, it just a simple philosophy has really helped me out a lot. Um, it's helped me achieve so much and get through so much. Um, and I hope me talking to you all here today could have helped me change the way you see things a little bit uh, for the better as the way it did to me. And you know what? Um, here's another cool thing I get to say. I wrote a motivational speech that I performed in front of a TEDx audience. Cool. Um, Uh, but in conclusion, make life a story to tell and be the person you'd want to be. Thank you.